Hey guys, this is Jake Griggs with Griggs Sculpting. Uh, welcome back to part two of our mold making series. Uh, in this particular video, I'm, I'm going to show you exactly what I did to prep the mold um, and get it ready to, uh, to put silicone on it. Um, last video, we talked about um, uh, simplifying the mold. And we did that by dividing up Goliath here. Uh, we divided up Goliath. Um, and we drew a line, talked about drawing a line all the way down to Goliath, and we make a two-part mold. We cut the arms off on David and Goliath, and we made molds for those. And uh, that simplifies our overall piece. So when we make our mold, which you'll understand in a little while, um, when we make our mold, it'll be very simple and very easy to pull it apart. And so I just want to discuss for a few minutes uh, my process on uh, prepping the mold. What I do when I make a mold is I use water-based clay. Uh, this water-based, what you see here, this big old messy looking stuff here. This is water-based clay uh, that I roll out, cut, make a cut, and I make a clean line where I divide the figure in half. It's not rocket science, it's not hard, but you need to take your time to uh, make a crisp line. First draw it on there with a Sharpie. You create a dividing line. This is how I set mine up every time. Um, and I divide it, and then I build a wall all the way around this figure. And this dividing wall uh, is, is going to play a very important role for our, uh, for our mold when we pour our molding material on there. But I use water-based clay, and the reason I use that is because water-based air-drying clay will uh, not shrink as fast. See, when, when you have water-based clays, they shrink really quickly. And uh, if you use pottery clay, which is generally cheaper, it will pull away from the figure before you're ready to, to make your mold. And then you'll have gaps on your lines and you'll have product leaking through and you won't get a good impression when you put your silicone mold on. Um, so I use this and this gives you a lot of liberty, a lot more time to work. But a warning, if you use water-based clays uh, to make your wall, to make your dividing lines, you don't want to let it sit around for very long um, or it will start to harden. And as it hardens, it will shrink and pull away from the figure. And sometimes it will ruin your figure and it will ruin the mold process. So what I do when I make these, I have a bag, a trash bag ready. And if I'm not ready to, to put my silicone on, I tie it up and, and I leave it sealed or I keep a spray bottle around it. Um, <clears throat> it this is wax-based clay or modeling clay. And... You don't want to use modeling clay on modeling clay to make your uh, to make your wall, because if you do, sometimes if the temperatures are different, it it, it will uh, it'll stick to itself, and then when you try to pull it off later, it'll ruin the back side of the sculpture. So if you look at the back side, the back side's not very pretty. It's not real. Uh, I'm just holding using things to prop it up, and then if you notice, I also have this card, this dividing wall with cards. Not only are you going to make a mold, you're going to make what we call a mother mold. Because the mold itself has to fit into something rigid and hard or it'll be, uh, it'll be real floppy and it won't work. And so I create a big wall here. So no product ever goes on the back side and ruins and nothing leaks through. And, and I usually go pretty well. And I use these, uh, these little cards. I, you can use... Uh, uh, playing, you know, a deck of cards, or, you know, these are from Dollar Tree. They're real cheap. I cut them in half, and I divide it up, and I use um, hot glue, and I hot glue it together. And all you're doing is building a dividing wall so nothing gets over on the other side. And you get a good impression all the way around on this figure. And then if you notice, all the way down, I build a wall here to catch the product. Because the products, when we put it on there, and you'll understand this process... When we put the silicone on, it's going to be real runny at first because it needs to capture all the detail. And it's going to run all the way down, and it's going to puddle here. And when it puddles, you don't want it spilling out, which I've had happen before. You don't want it spilling out all over the ground and lose expensive product. And so you create a wall here, protect that, keep it. Now on some sculptures, <clears throat> if you have a hard sculpture, already cooked sculpture, or an already... Um, uh, uh, baked sculpture in the oven, like Super Sculpey or something like that. You can lay actually lay it on the ground and build a wall around it, and it's much easier to deal with. Um, 
But when you have a figure that's wax based or modeling clay, sometimes you risk damaging if you try to lay it down. And so you have to do, what we're going to do is a, uh, a brush on mold, and I'll show you how to do that on the next video. But prepping is important. If you don't take your time on this process, you're going to ruin your sculpture, and you're going to waste your time and waste a lot of money. And I get it. I understand that it's scary to make a mold. Uh, and it's and it's uh, <laughs> you're afraid you're going to destroy your stuff, and it's easier just to pay someone. But being a professional artist and growing in your craft is growing in understanding and growing in knowledge. And so I encourage you to push yourself to think about these processes. Um, they're not that hard if we simplify it. Now let me show you something else. Um, I've got some where we made the molds on the figures. I cut off the arms, and we talked about that last time. I cut the arms off, and I'm doing the same thing with these, but I'm actually laying them down, building a wall with this cardboard. And let me say a quick tip on the cardboard. Cardboard works pretty well. It lets you fold, uh, make real easy folds around this, and then I use hot glue. You don't want to leave water-based clay in cardboard for too long, or the water from the clay will absorb into the cardboard and it'll start pulling away and it'll make a mess. And then my figure, this is wax-based clay, so when it gets cold, it gets hard. And when it gets hot, it melts. And so when I have these figures that we cut off, which I showed you last time, it gets hard as a rock if you'll go put it in the freezer for 10 or 15 minutes. Then take your, your wet clay and smash it down into the clay and it'll create a real nice crisp line and then you go and you'll, you'll clean it up. I'm trying to find my tool here. You'll, you'll clean it up the edges. You'll clean the edges up real nice. And you're going to get some clay on the figure. That's no big deal. That's, especially for my sculptures. My sculptures don't require a tremendous amount of finesse on these projects. I mean, on, these, on this process, because my sculptures are rough. They're usually rough in nature. And I do that because of um, I like uh, the patina to pull out a lot of, uh, a lot of character. When it's real smooth and perfect, the patina, uh, you do a bronzing effect, it, it'll look real flat. And so let me show you one more thing on the sword. I have a piece of metal here. It goes from the tip of the sword all the way back to the hilt of the sword. That's important because when we cast this later, we cast it, you, air bubbles will want to force to the end of the sword. And so I give it a, I get a, a bleeder. It's almost like a bleeder valve. And it bleeds itself all the way back to the top so you don't have any air bubbles. And then if you notice, I make these little key registry holes. Okay, when we pour the silicone into this, into this mold, those are going to set into those holes, and they're actually going to be keys for when we turn it over, it'll have somewhere to sit into. And you're going to understand that process next video. And then one more thing, when you have a figure like this, you need to consider and think about, you need a place to pour your material, your casting, not silicone, but your resin. And if you look right here, if you look right here, we have a spout where I, we'll pour our material in later, and you'll understand that process. So if you're if you're kind of confused right now at all, if you're kind of confused on what we're doing, stick with me on the next video. You will completely get it, and especially the video after that, when we turn everything over and pull all the dividing walls up, um, you'll you'll understand what we're doing. It'll click in your head. And then I have these other, uh, these couple others. Uh, they're the same process. This was Goliath's hand, and then David's arms, and they're the same process. These are a little bit easier because they're smaller. We'll fill these with silicone, um, turn them over, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And so basically, uh, basically, the prep mold process. Um, is the most difficult for people because if you mess up on this process and you don't focus, um, you can you can really mess your sculpture up and have an unsuccessful mold. So take your time. And so let me encourage you um, when you're watching my video, uh, post comments below. Any type of questions you have, if you have a sculpture, you can message me. You can send me an email. Um, you can uh, send me a comment below, and I'm happy to look at your stuff and give you some advice. I'm not the best sculptor in the world, um, or the the most. Uh, I guess I'm not. I'm not the most. I guess the prettiest mold maker in the world. Um, 
but I get the job done and I make all my own molds and I can point you in the right direction and give you some advice. So please, if you like this video, uh, please like and subscribe and leave me some comments. Give me some feedbacks. I'm learning this whole process just like everyone else. And let me give you a quick word of encouragement. If you're watching this and you're an artist, you have, you have a, a gift that was put into your very being to create. Use your art to do something amazing in the world. Use it to do something that brings joy and encouragement. Use it to change the world. Don't just try to be a different artist. Be one who makes a difference uh, in people's lives with your work. And so, uh, all that to say, next video will be part three. We uh, are going to dig into it and we're going to make a mold uh, we're gonna we're gonna do the molding process and that's when you know uh, the rubber meets the road and there's no turning back after we do that um, so anyways I appreciate you guys watching these videos y'all are awesome uh, please please if you're interested um, if you're interested in any way um, if you're interested in any way uh, and, and lost with your mold making process right now, please contact me. I'll give you all the advice I can give you because you know what? People gave me free advice. Um, I found people that helped me out and I want to help you out. Thanks guys. I appreciate it.